I know y'all have not heard from me for the entire month of May. It's June. My sincere apologies. I came here to beg for your forgiveness. Um, but seriously though, y'all, I made this commitment to y'all that I was going to like be potting on a regular basis. Um, and life just completely exploded. So yeah, it did not happen. I apologize. I am legitimately working on an actual podcast schedule so that I can like schedule my stuff out. But, um, I tried that for, for June, I mean for May, but it just didn't happen. So I came here for three reasons. One, I just wanted to provide you guys with an update. I haven't disappeared. I'm still going forward with the podcast. Two, a little bit of a life update so you'll understand why I have been so busy and potting has not been like a top priority. And then three, just a little something different this time. Um, This would be like a kind of favorite things review sort of thing. Um, It's a product that I talk about all the time on my Instagram page, but I realized I haven't talked about it in like super great detail. Um, And I think I want to take the time to do that. So this is just kind of like a a little hold you over until the next time um, I have a chance to pod. So first things first, yes, I'm still potting. Yes, I still have people that I want to have on the podcast. I had one episode planned and the girl that I was supposed to be recording with, she got sick, so she couldn't do it. Then the other episode, I actually did record it and the audio and video did not end up working out. So yeah, it's not that I haven't been trying. It's just that the scheduling has been completely off. So that's what's going on with that, but I do have plans to record a new episode next week with a guest that I'm really excited about talking to. Um, So I think it'll be um, a great experience Um, once we get a chance to sit down and record. So many things have happened in a month, like since I recorded with y'all that I haven't had a chance to talk about, that I want to talk about. So I got to like go through everything that's happened because in the social media age, it's like things just change so quickly. Um... But there are a few things I just want to go back and address and just kind of talk about. Um, but yeah, that's that. New episodes coming. This is a hold you over until I have a chance to get back into a regular routine. All right. So I have not released episodes since April 27th. In that time, I have been so busy. Y'all, my event planning business, I had two events on May the, was it the 19th or the 12th, whatever that Saturday was that I was in um, the D.C. area. Um, I was back home in Virginia. And both of them were graduation parties. One of them was fairly organized and kind of, you know, it was, I was kind of straightforward. The other one, it was a little bit harder to get my clients on board with getting some of the things that needed to be done, done. So it was taking up a significant amount of my time. Um, So I was just super busy planning that. Then... Um, I don't know how many of y'all know, but like I started a new job back in March. And so the first month of the new job was cool. Y'all like April and May. Well, I won't say April. April was like the end of April was a little crazy towards the end of quarter, but May so busy. So we're talking about crazy busy at work, crazy busy, um, in the event planning stuff in y'all know I've been having back problems, right? Well, I don't know how much I talked about it, but I was having severe back problems. So I was referred from referred to a pain specialist. The pain specialist decides that I need to have um, epidural steroid injections in my back. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, I'm not doing it. But it got to the point where, like, I couldn't do day-to-day things. I couldn't put my pants on. I couldn't stand up for very long. Like, I would go to church, and I couldn't really stand up in church longer than, like, maybe one or two minutes without, like, severe pain. Um, Just walking, sitting, standing, doing anything, you know, was very painful. So since then, I've gotten two sets of the steroid injections in my back. Both of those procedures required me to um, be under anesthesia that I couldn't drive and all that stuff so they could do the steroid injections. So I am feeling, I'm feeling like 117% better. So hopefully these will help. I'll be able to do the things I need to do to strengthen um, the issues that I have going on in my back. Um, And, well, not strengthen, but help. Um, the issues I have going on my back physical fitness wise and with physical therapy um, so that I won't have this will not be like a consistent thing or whatever so that's the plan on that Um, I told you I had two events so one was in Maryland one was in Virginia both were graduation parties they both turned out really really great I super super enjoyed it Um, and in the midst of all of that y'all know I'm still planning weddings so like my weddings are coming up um one's in September one's in October but there's still things that have to be planned with those right so it's like all of that was going on and I was just like I'm overwhelmed so um 
in the midst of all of that, I just have been trying to be somewhat consistent in my workout regimen. I tried to like take care of my mental health, which I felt like was just declining because I was so stressed. I was like not able to work out like I wanted to because I was in so much pain. So it's just been a battle, like for real. So I'm feeling better. I'm feeling like I'm getting back on track. Um, I also had company one weekend, like um, since I released the podcast episode and it was my friend's first time ever in Houston. So I had to do like the full out Houston out every single day weekend. Yeah, I was out Friday, Saturday and Sunday. When she left on Monday morning, I think I was just like, I think I slept like pretty much just slept and worked like that the rest of that week, like until like Thursday. And mind you, this is in the midst of like trying to plan all these events. So it's like, I'm trying to like get in sleep where I can, trying to get in work, trying to get, it's just crazy. So thankfully a lot of that has calmed down. I've decided personally, I'm probably not taking on any more events um, for this year. I want to get to a place where I just, I'm a little bit of pe- I'm at peace. Like if there's like a really, really good event that I can't resist, I'll take it on maybe for like December or something. But like, as far as like the fall, I think I'm done. I think I'm pretty much going to let these two weddings be what it's going to be. Um, so I have those going on. Um, I've been reading. Um, I don't know how many of y'all are readers, but I'm a big reader. So um, I read a crazy ass book called The Arrangement. Um, wild book. Um, I actually did the audio book on that one. It was like a six hour audio book, I think, or maybe less than maybe a little more than that. But y'all listen to the whole thing within 24 hours. So good. I highly recommend y'all go out and um, read that. And I can tell y'all who that is actually, um, who that's actually by, because I was just like, this is wild. Um, so it's called The Arrangement. And it's, it's by uh, Kirsten Moglin, Moglin. Um, crazy, but it's the first part of a three part series. So I plan on getting books two and three at some point, um, whenever I have a chance, cause I got plenty of stuff to listen to. Speaking of other things that I'm listening to on audible, I'm now listening to the perfect marriage, which is, um, fairly long one. And it's like kind of moving a little slow, but, um, that's like so far so good. That one is actually based in like the DC area and some parts of like Northern Virginia. So it's really interesting to hear how the writer refers to things about the area when you know the area so well and you're like, that's not, you know, that's not accurate, but that one's pretty good. Um, I'm also slowly but surely getting through Will's um, biography. Um, That's pretty good. Having him narrate in his own voice has been pretty interesting. So I'm slowly but surely getting through that. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm also reading slowly and I don't know why it's taking me this long because I feel like this is probably a really good book and it's just me but I'm also reading um Black Girls Must Die Exhausted um y'all I've been trying to get into this book for like a month and I can't but I'm gonna work on it I'm gonna try to I might what chapter am I in y'all I might be on like let me see dang these chapters must be long Am I in chapter two? It ain't no way I'm... Oh, I'm in chapter four. So I'm in chapter four, and I don't even know how many chapters are in the book, but yeah, I am... Let's see. How many chapters are in the book? Um, Come on, epilogue. This book is 41 chapters, so I have a long ways to go. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get finished with this by the end of the month. If anybody else is reading this and y'all want to talk about this, or you start reading it this month, I promise I'm going to be done by the end of the month so we can talk about it, because that's like one of my favorite things in the whole world, getting to talk about books. And then we talking about taking care of our mental health. Y'all know I've been working on prioritizing that. And in prioritizing that, I have also been working on prioritizing my relationship with God. And that's a whole other conversation. Um, I've just done so many things over the last like 10, 11 months to just try to make some serious um, moves in that area because um, God has provided for me in ways that I still do not feel worthy of, that I are unbelievable. Um, miraculous miracle like sort of movement in my life and I'm so appreciative and I'm so thankful and I just think to myself that if he does this and he moves in my life in this way when I don't feel like I'm as close to him as I could be what could happen if I make that a part that relationship a priority so I've been working on that tremendously it's something I don't talk about a lot um publicly um but I talk about it to a few friends pretty regularly but just to you know I'm talking about what I'm reading now I started um, a devotional by Joyce Meyer called Healing the Soul of a Woman. Um, It's 90 days. I'm just now getting it started, but it's about overcoming your emotional wounds. And I just realized that, like, 
I am such a power through whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling, just keep moving, keep it going. You got to get through it. You can't get down about it. I'm such a whatever person that I don't take time to, to heal myself for the things that like have happened, you know, in my past or that have hurt me. It's like, I refuse to, um, put certain titles on myself. Right. And, um, it wasn't until I actually read the first chapter of this book where it talked about heartbreak. I never, never labeled myself as having a broken heart. Right. And, um, you know, a broken heart doesn't just have to mean relationships. You know, your friends can break your heart. Um, your parents can break your heart. You know, all relationships are a possibility of breaking your heart. And I went through so many things, so many things. Oh, yeah. And in the midst of all of that, I've been going through a lot of friend stuff. Like, y'all, I've been going through so much. And I've realized that there have been some areas of my life where people have disappointed me to the level of heartbreak. Um, and I never labeled myself heartbroken because I'm just, I'm like, no, that's not me. That sounds weak. Like, nah, that's not me. But nah, here we are. We healing the soul of this woman. Um, and it's, it's been pretty good so far. And I like Joyce Meyer. Um, this is my first time actually reading one of her books. Um, but I'm interested in seeing how this goes. So we'll see. I'm going to try. It's 90 days and I get a little off track. So I'm going to try to stay as on track as I can on this one. Um, ideally, I would love to have it done by the end of the summer. So hopefully I can commit and do what I'm supposed to do. But yeah, I've been reading this. Um, something I've been doing out just outside of this devotional, but I have a prayer journal. So I've been writing my prayers in my prayer journal and my devotional study in there and um, my Bible study in there. So that's been good because you know how like you be like, God, can you do X, Y, Z for me? And then he do it and you'd be like, oh, God, you're doing a little bit too much. I'd ask for all that. You got to go back and look at that prayer journal and be like, girl, what did you write in there? Like, you know, because it's a reminder to be like, be careful what you pray for because you got to be ready to receive those things, you know? And so, um, that's been something I've been actively working on. It's just like when I pray for things, um, pray with intention and knowing that like I can pray for peace, right? But peace may not come the way that I expect it to come, right? It can come in the form of isolation. It can come in the form of, you know, being so busy with my business that I don't have an opportunity to even you know, reflect on what's going on in my day to day life. So it just seems so peaceful. And, and in reality, it's not maybe God's trying to sit me down and tell me, girl, you got nah, you can't get peace until you like sit down and, and do something um, that I need you to do. So I'm just trying to figure all that out, y'all. So I'm reading this book as well. Um, what else? What else have I been doing? Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I went to this really cool event. Y'all probably heard about it if you're in the DMV area. It's called like Celebrez and um, Rosé. And it's like this music and wine festival where everyone wears pink. And it's just like such a cute event. Um, it was really well um, planned out this time. Y'all know I'm real critical on events. When I go, I'll be like, mm, this shit is ghetto. But it actually was pretty good. I've heard that in the past it wasn't that great. Um, the only thing I have to say is that the day they had it in Houston, it was 95 degrees. They had it in the middle of a park. There was literally no shade. And it was miserable. Just miserable. But my friends and I, we looked cute. Just seeing black people get dressed and just get fly and put that shit on. It's just, it's just the, oh my God, I love it. So I enjoyed doing that. Um, had a great time. That was Memorial Day weekend. I had a good Memorial Day weekend. It was a mixture between like turn up and rest, which is what I needed. So yeah, I've been doing okay. Um, I'm drinking water out of a wine glass. <laughs> it's for the vibes, but I'm trying to um, try not to drink that much because I'm trying to see like what changes my body can do if I eliminate alcohol. So I'm trying to like at least cut back significantly this month. Um, I do have like this exciting weekend plan coming up, um, Juneteenth weekend, I'm going away and I'm really excited about that. And I know that the whole focus of that weekend is kind of me and my friends drinking, not the whole focus, but we're going like wine tasting at several wineries. So it's like, all right, I'm going to be drinking. So outside of that, I'm trying to really stay focused and do the right thing because um, y'all see on my Instagram, pretty much I just work out all the time. <laughs> um, I've been doing Pilates once or twice a week, try to get it in twice a week, but have been hard up until recently but now that I'm feeling better my back is better and I have more time twice a week is what I do I usually do a mixture of Pilates and then like another class it'll be like booty and core or core and strength so I don't ever do straight out hardcore Pilates classes because that's just like I feel like I'm just not there and I like to kind of you know make sure I, I'm getting in like all sorts of type of training I don't want to just do core core or 
core or just all booty or whatever. So I try to kind of like mix it up so that I'm getting a full body workout. Um, and then I do Orange Theory once a week. Kind of want to switch it. I kind of want to do Pilates once a week and Orange Theory twice a week. But right now that's the plan I'm on. And then I do my Peloton. I was doing good. I was doing like four to five times a week. I'm on like three to four times a week now. But I just enrolled in the Discover Your Power Zones challenge course that they have and that has a set schedule for us every week so um one i'll be sticking to that schedule for the next five weeks and so i'll at least be doing those classes every week and then two i'll probably be adding in some fun classes because those classes are really really heavy um endurance based classes and they're really teaching you how to be a stronger cycler and then i'm gonna want to throw in some fun stuff so i was just like yeah so that's what i'm doing this month that's the update on my life really quick um I don't think I have anything else to tell y'all. No. Mm -mm. I think that's everything. Um, so let's get into, hold on. Let's get into a review of one of my favorite products. So y'all always hear me talk about um, Body of a Goddess and these body oils. And I know I've talked about it in the podcast before, but I have never talked about it in detail. And it's like, how I'm going to do like a whole Skims review. Oh, I got a Skims right now. Um, I have on my little stoop tank. Um, how am I do a whole Skims review? And I'm not even reviewing like a product that I I wear Skims every day too. I ain't gonna lie, I wear something Skims every day. But my point being, how am I not? You know, I'm gonna do this for Kim, but I'm not gonna do this for a black owned business. And it's not just any black owned business. It's my cousin's black owned business. And I want to start by saying she has no idea I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna upload this on YouTube, and she's gonna be like, Oh my God, I can't believe you did this. So she's not asking me to do this. I don't get any money for it. Um, I support her because I want to. I, I spend my money with her because I want to, not because I have to. Um, I legitimately believe in her brand, and it's just really dope. And, like, she's just a dope person. So I want to talk to you all a little bit about her oil. So we're going to do an unboxing, um, and then we're going to talk about, like, I have almost every oil in the collection. I think I'm missing one. And that's, like, I'll tell you all about that when we get there. So first off, every month she does a different like packaging, a different box. So this one is the May one. Um, and you can see it says, hello, May. And then you can see that she talks a little bit about the oils. It's lots of branding on the side. And one of the things that we have in common, one of the things, because we have a lot in common, is that our favorite color is purple. So this box is just, it's everything for me. But um, yeah, like they have affirmations on the boxes. So one of the affirmations says, I deserve the best life has to offer. And I'm excited to see how good it can get. It's just like, yes, speak that over yourself. Space, you get mail that's like affirming positivity in your life. Um, and then this other one says, self-care is a form of self-respect and I prioritize it. Absolutely. Um, and then this just talks a little bit about the oils. It says, the oils contain an aphrodisiac called blue lotus that lifts your mood, moisturize your skin, and combat eczema and psoriasis. They come in 14 luxuri luxurious uh, fragrances. So let's see how many I have. I have 10. So I think I'm missing the three male ones and then one of the um, the others. So And I don't want the male ones because, like, I don't want to smell like a man. But they smell good, too. We'll talk about that. I don't remember which one I like the most, so I don't know how much I can talk about it. But anyways, so this is how it comes in the box, just like this. Um, as you can see, they're wrapped in, like, the little plastic. So let me take the little plastic off. Um... But every month, it's like a different little, she um, sometimes puts like little free gifts in there. So like, um, she'll have like a, one month, it was like a moon, um, a moon mask, I think. And I've gotten a pen before, I believe. I got, one time she sent me, a, um, one time she sent me a wine stopper. Um, so I've gotten a bunch of different like gifts or whatever from her. So like, I think she occasionally puts them in there based on, you know, um, I don't, I don't know what she bases it on. It's just like a surprise. So like, yeah, she does the um, free gifts from time to time. So that's how it comes packaged or whatever. And you can kind of see here a little bit more what it actually looks like in the box. So let's talk about the oils. So she has three, four different collections. The first one I'll talk about is the male oils. It's called Body of a God. And those are male oils. Like they have the similar um, ingredients, but they're more manly fragrances. Um, I like them. I have male friends that like them. Um, my ex, I, he don't really wear fragrances like that, I don't think. But he seemed to like it considering that he's not a guy that really wears cologne and stuff like that. So he seemed to like it. So I thought that was kind of a big deal. So overall, in general, 
men seem to love it. My brother loves it. Um, my brother said that like he gets a lot of compliments when he wears it. So people notice it. And it's not, it doesn't have like, I hate like when I say body oils because people automatically think of like those body oils like in the hair store or the Egyptian musk. Like, no, we're not, this is, that, this is not that. This is not that. These are literally like luxury body oils. These are an experience, right? So I'll start talking, I'll stop talking about the male oils and go into the ones that I actually really know about. So the original collection that she released is the Sacred Lotus Body Oil. And these are the ones that come in like the gold bottles, right? And I'll tell you guys a little bit about like the ingredients. I don't know how to pronounce some of this stuff, y'all, but I'll just tell y'all in general what the ingredients are. Um, sweet almond oil, jojoba oil, sesame oil, blue lotus absolute, moon power, and positive vibrations. So I believe that she makes these on um, each month um, during the new moon, and um, she charges them in the moon. I, I believe that's what she does. Um, so, but just to give you guys an idea of like, what is the big deal with the blue lotus um, oil? It's um, an oil that was discovered in Egypt, and I'm reading this off her website because I didn't memorize all of this, but it was an oil that was discovered in ancient Egypt, and it's a natural anxiety and stress remedy. It speeds up healing, increases circulation, and calms muscle spasms. It provides intense moisture while balancing sebum. I don't know what sebum is, but it's balancing it, so I don't know what that is. Um, and it can be used to elevate your consciousness. So having such a relaxing effect, it is also thought of as cannabis of ancient Egypt. The blue lotus flower opens her petals at dawn, closes them again at dusk. The flower has the symbol of different, Af the flower is a symbol of different African deities. Um, and it's a symbol of the crown chakra. So yeah, that is, oh yeah, so this is more about the oil. She says that the oils are only made once a month on the full moon. Okay, they're made on the full moon. Then they're combined in a jar while affirmations are spoken over them. They're infused with clear quartz crystal, which is a powerful crystal that amplifies energy and intention. On the full moon, a symbol of completion, the batch is placed under the moonlight. There will be a limited quality release each month due to the process. Yeah, so basically she's just saying that she makes them once a month and they have a bunch of like, y'all, I heard something in the door. <laughs> they have a bunch of um, moon power things and I'm not into that stuff that much y'all so if you're into like crystals in the moon and all that stuff you'll know exactly what she's talking about I just trust that it's good vibes okay but um yeah so that's the first thing about these oils so I'm gonna just talk about the fragrances real quick because she has them all described differently or whatever so we'll start with grandiose garden and honestly this is the one that I probably wear the least but it's because it's a very floral forward fragrance and that one is here we go. This is the Grandiose Garden one. Y'all can see my bottle here. But that one is probably the most floral. I am not a floral girl. So that's why I don't wear it that often. But I do still wear it. Like I definitely, when I want to have like a very powerful scent going somewhere, I'll wear it there. Because to me, it's like very, it, it leaves like before you. Um, and like people smell you coming. They kind of smell you coming in all of these. But this one's like very powerful to me. Um, but basically, the one that one has like... Um, some of this stuff, I don't know what this is. The Tura flower, berries, pear, sparkling champagne, and patchouli. It's an intoxicating floral like you've never smelled before. She says, because she describes how these fragrances smell outside of like the actual makeup of what she put into the fragrance, right? It smells like a group of young black women whose passport stamp, who passports have more stamps than the post office, who genuinely celebrate each other and won't settle for less. If that sounds like you, Grandiose Garden is the one for you, okay? So next we're going to talk about probably, this is probably the oil that is everybody's favorite. Like, she told me this is the most popular, her bestseller, but it's called Lavish Velvet. And Lavish Velvet is right, I'm sorry, Lavish Velvet is right here. So, okay, I used to not think Lavish Velvet was my favorite, but then it became my favorite. But now I have a new favorite, but I'm going to tell you I'm all a favorite too. But anyway, of this collection. So, Lavish Velvet, bomb. Bomb. It just smells like sexy. It smells like it's time to get it popping. It smells like just lo great. It just smells good. It just smells sexy. You just smell like a grown ass woman, okay? So this one, the scent notes are black plum nectar, vanilla, lychee, sandalwood. And it, she describes it as um, warm, dramatic, and addictive. 
addictive is really good word. Like, it's a really good word to describe it. So she says that this one smells like a black lady that owns a successful business, drives a Mercedes G-Wagon. Yes, it's giving me because that's what I'm trying to drive and has no debt. And I'm trying to be debt free. You know what? Let me go ahead and put this one on all the time because I'm trying to manifest that for myself. So this one is Lavish Velvet. It is the top seller. It is Everyone loves that one. So that was my current favorite until literally like a week ago. Um, so my previous favorite when I, when she first released the oils was Bougie Boho. And let's see, what did she say about that one? It's vanilla, honey, bohemian amber. It's sweet, subtle, and luxurious. And like, it just smells, I don't know. It just smells good. Like she says, this one smells like, um, what Erica Badu, Lauren Hill, and Sade smell like when they come together to mentor Zendaya minus the weed. First of all, these descriptions are everything, right? But this one is just, I don't know. It's just, it's like strong, but subtle. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's powerful, but it's like, it's, you're not doing too much. It's like you're going to leave a little scent in the air when you walk away. It's not like, damn, Brittany was just in here with all this like perfume on. It's like, hmm, what was that? Or who smelled like that? It's This one was my, was my favorite. That's why it's like almost pretty much empty. I need to order another one of these. And so then I just started getting really into Lavish Velvet and I was wearing that shit all the time. And then, um, y'all, she just released a new one. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So this one is Eternal Essence. And oh my God, I just, I need to put it on right now. <laughs> love it. Oh my God. Okay. This one, and this one is floral, and I really love, it's not like crazy floral. It's not grand, um, it's not grandiose, gar grandiose garden at all, but it's like, just, it's, yeah, so she describes it pretty well. It's passion flower, grapefruit, and raspberry. So first off, I love grapefruit anything, like, that's just become a new thing for me, but she says it's floral yet fruity and divinely feminine, and I agree, it's floral but fruity, and I really do like fruity, so this one is just smells so good. So she said it smells like heaven. Okay. Mm. Heaven. Her beauty is out of this world and her energy is light and peaceful. She's an angel on earth and smells like one too. I'm going to tell y'all what I told her when I put that one on. I was like, girl, I smell so good. I can't wait to be laid up next to somebody smelling, smelling like heaven. Okay. Like a dream. Like, is this happening? That's what that shit smells like. This is amazing. Okay. So this one, Eternal or eth is it ethereal? Oh, ethereal. Whatever, however you say it. Is it ethereal? I didn't even know what that word was either, y'all. She be coming up with words that I just, or ingredients and words I just don't know. But um, ethereal? Yeah, ethereal? I don't know which one it is. But anyways, the Essence one, it's very great. I love it. It's my current favorite. Um, that's the Sacred Lotus Body Oil Collection or whatever. The next one we're going to talk about was the second release she came out, which is the limited edition Summer Shimmer Body Oils. When she came out with these, y'all, they had a chokehold on me. This one I smell like all last summer. All last summer. All last summer. So she has three in that collection. She has Titties Out in Tahiti, Megan Knees in the Grill, and Bent Over in Bali. So these oils are similar ingredients, um, but the difference in these is that they have a... I think it's called mica or pica, pica, mica powder. Something that she puts in here that makes it have this shimmer. So you can see it's like the shimmer is sitting at the bottom. You shake it up and then you get like this, like this, like this really pretty bronzy color. So y'all can tell which one is my favorite, okay? Titties out in Tahiti. That's my favorite. So let me describe to y'all what titties out in Tahiti is like because I... It just smells like last summer to me. Actually, that's kind of triggering. Girl, I'm going to put these away until next summer. I don't know. But, okay. So, Titties Out in Tahiti. It is, let's see, how does she describe this one? I don't know if it's going to work better. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Titties Out in Tahiti. It's um, acai flower and vanilla, which is right up my alley. Like, fruity. Oh, it's just I love it. I love it so much. This is this is the one for me. I love this one. Um, this one this one's pretty cool because when you put it on, you get like a nice little shimmer. If you're gonna be out by the pool, if you're gonna be out and about doing something, um, it's just a really great um summertime sort of thing. Just be careful, you know, when you put it on, 
you know, you want to make sure you don't get any transfer on your clothes or whatever. Um, but it's very, very light. It's fruity. It's summer. It doesn't have like a heavy at all. Like definitely not a nighttime. This is a daytime. Like this is a day party um, by the pool sort of fragrance, a vacation fragrance, right? This is not something that I would probably, I did put it on at night though. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Especially when you out at night and it's like you out on some rooftop shit or you out and you like outside doing something. Okay, you can wear it at night, but it's going to be like a more calming sort of thing. It's not going to be like that. You know how at night you want to smell like powerful and like deep and dark and sexy? That's not what this is giving. So actually this collection in general, I think is just more like lighter, summery, vacation sort of um, fragrances. The other, my second favorite in this collection is the Meganese in the Grill. So similar thing. Shake it up. Y'all see what it looks like or whatever. Um, Meganese in the Grill. Um, it's coconut and ginger. And I really love this one too. Um, it just smells just so good. I don't know. I don't. I know y'all don't believe me, but I'm serious. Just listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm going to be leading y'all wrong on this podcast, okay? Um, Meganese in the Grill. Love it. The other one in this collection is the Bent Over in Bali. And Bent Over in Bali is coconut lychee, apple, and hibiscus flower. And I'm really, I'm really partial to this one because um, even though I don't use it as much, I'm really partial to this one because she, I kind of helped her when she was coming up with how she wanted this one to smell. She kind of changed it a little bit. And I was like, I got to smell it before it was finalized. And then it got, oh, now I'm starting to love this one. See, it's like, I just go, I don't be know what I'm talking about. This is bomb. This is bomb. Y'all, these are just, these are perfect for vacation. These are perfect for them daytime. When you lay out by the pool, you still want to smell good. You want to have a little shimmer, a little glow. You want to kind of be getting your little tan on. These are perfect for that, okay? So, yes, the um, summer oils are only available in the summer. Um, there are three limited, limit, limited edition, if I can talk, fragrances that she only releases in the summer. So, get them while you can because she has them out now, but they will not be out um once she sells out and i think she makes a limited number and then that's just it um and she said that they were all expired by her exotic travels so she's like a big traveler and so she's been all over the world and so she um we've been in the grill together but she's been to jamaica like 15 times um i don't know if she's been to tahiti i know she's been to bali i'm pretty sure she's been to bali she might have been to tahiti because her ass be everywhere so she said they were inspired by exotic travels and that's exactly what they smell like but lastly, but not least at all, this collection was the one for me because I have bad allergies. And so um, that's why Grandiose Garden is a little hard on me because of my allergies. I can't do very um, floral things. And I was so worried about the new fragrance, but um, that one does not bother my allergies at all. And I, honestly, Grandiose Garden doesn't either. Um, if I'm having like a normal day, unless I'm like super triggered by like the pollen already. But this Daily Opulence Body Oil Collection, it is the one for me, I wear it when it says daily opulence, I wear it every single day. It's either gonna be put on the nighttime or put on the night put on in the nighttime after my shower or put on in the morning after my shower. Um, I wear this literally every day. Um, so let me talk to y'all about this collection because this is I be tearing these oils up. Like I go through these ones probably more than the others just because I literally use them every single day. So the um let me go here so i want to get the descriptions so first off she is so bomb at coming up with these names of these products like she's so creative so the only one there's four in this collection the only one i don't have is sex on a bed of roses and the reason why i don't have that one is because i already know sex on a bed of roses roses no it's not gonna work for me but i need to smell it because i might be wrong because i've been wrong about all these um since I might just need to order that the next time I re-up just to see. And if I don't like it or it triggers me, I can give it away to somebody. They'll be happy because, you know, different people have different fragrance desires. So Sex on a Bed of Roses, I don't have that one. But that one, I can't really read what it says on here. Let me see if I can read it. Um, let me see. It says some type of rose, amber, hibiscus, and strawberry. Um, so yeah, we're talking fruity and floral, it sounds like, and also a little sexy because the amber's in there. So I actually, I probably need to go ahead and get that one because it sounds like I'm going to like it. Um, but yeah, that one's, I think, a little more floral. Let's see what she says about that one. I don't think she has a label for that one. Okay, so the next three, I have them here. So, um, butt naked black woman. This, this one here, this one here, and I just got a new bottle. Um, and a, and another new bottle. So first off, 
It has like little gold flakes in it, y'all. Look. Little gold flakes. Like that is so cute. So this one, this is this is how I'm gonna smell 80% of the time I get out the shower. Did after I get the shower, this is how I'm gonna smell. Like you come over to the crib after I just took my shower, I'm gonna smell like butt naked black woman because we smell the fuck good and I wanna smell like what she thinks we should smell like. So yeah, this one is Shea Rice Flour and Coconut. It's just very light. Like if you're like a Shea Butter Coconut, um, not coconut. Well, no, yeah, coconut. If you're a Shea Butter or um, what am I trying to think of? Cocoa Butter type of person, like this is gonna be for you. These are very light. They're not like super super powerful, but you still smell. It's like it's kind of like. You know, again, it's not like, oh my God, I'm here, but it's like, mm, pretty good. It's like kind of a smell. Like, nope. When people hug me, they're like, damn, you smell good. And that's like the best compliment because it's like, I know. And then it's like, you know, you be wearing your cousin's shit. So you'd be like, damn, she popping because my cousin's fragrance is a bomb. So for me, it's like a flex, okay? So next one is Sweet Sensuality. And this one is apricot, chamomile, and jasmine absolute. Um, this one says, love without, so sweet sensuality, sweet sensuality. Y'all cannot talk. Um, it's love without sensuality is a sin. And this one, it has, I don't know what these are. I think these are, maybe it's jasmine in here. Y'all can see, like, there's something in the bottle. And they all have these little tassels on them, but I ended up taking the little tassels. Y'all, I'm over here messing up. I ended up taking the little tassels off. Um, but this one is very sweet. Very, very sweet. Um, fruity. Yeah, this one's just, um, yeah, I would say this one kind of gives me almost like a candy. Like, I could see this kind of being like a candy, like really, really fruity. I like this one a lot. As y'all can see, I do use it a lot still. Um, it's It just smells so fruity and like flirty. It smells very flirty. I'll put it that way. And then finally, it's a tie between butt naked black woman and be his piece for me. Um, be his piece is green tea. Bamboo, lavender, bergamot, and I think it says neroli. I can't, it's very um, small print on here. But the tagline is, girl, chill out. So this one is like, girl, you need to relax. So in the bottles, it has lavender in there, if you can see. It has lavender in there. So like, her ingredients are legit. Like, what she's putting in there is literally what she's putting in there. You know what I'm saying? So this one, another really just relaxing one. These ones are like, this one smells like a spa. Like you would go and like, you would want to take this oil with you if you were getting a massage and have them like use this oil to massage you. That's what this smells like. It smells like a spa day. It smells so good and so relaxing. I really, really love that one. I use that one a lot at night or in the, like, honestly, I put that one on a lot in the morning um, before I work because it's like gives me like this zen kind of like. Girl, get your mood together for this, you know, work day. I didn't tell y'all what the tagline was on the butt naked black woman was, but it um, it's treat your skin like the gold that it is, and that's why she has the gold flakes in there. So that's the um, that's the tagline on that one. But overall, I just wanted to keep this short. I just want to talk to y'all about the business. Um, I'm gonna tag her socials and her website in the bottom just to give you guys a price. Um, uh, Idea on the price. So the daily opulence oils, which are the last collection I just talked about, those are $36.99 each. Um, the sacred lotus body oil, those are $39.99 each. And then let's see what we're talking about on the shimmer oils. Those are $36.99 each. Um, the shimmer oil and the daily opulence collection are two ounces, and then the sacred blue lotus body oils are 100 milliliters um so yeah i love these oh she had offers after pay so you know if you want to buy now pay later she got that she does um also has pay later with shop pay it says on here as well so you can have that option um she has gift sets up here for like 10 percent off if you buy a gift set she has trial sizes of the sacred um, lotus body oil so if you so these ones the ones in the gold bottle that i was talking about if you get those, um, you can get a small size just to try it out to see if you're going to like it. Um, and those are $24.99. And I think the size of those is, hmm, those are two ounces. So these, I think, are three, I think. Or maybe, yeah, I think they're three. And then, so you're going to get, for the price, it looks like you're getting 
$24.99 for two ounces of the ones in the gold. So, yeah, um, she has a whole bunch of other products, y'all. She also has, like, I'm on her website now. She has um, a yoni wash. She has um, body scrubs that have matching scents to the fragrances that she has. She has um, natural body washes. She has this really cute shirt that I really need to get. It's, like, black women, you are the luxury. Because, you know, like, we're always talking about, like, you know, black girl luxury. We are the luxury. Like, we was born the luxury, you know? So I just love her energy. Like, her, like I'm just so proud of her. But, like, even if she wasn't my cousin, I would be buying this stuff. It is great. So, yeah, like the Yoni Wash, I had, um, which one did I have? Let's see, y'all. I think I had, I think I had Goddess. Okay, so her Yoni Wash, she has three different offerings. And then she has one that's a squirrel, like two of the um, offerings in one bottle so the first one she has is tastes like pineapples and that one is i'm gonna tell y'all a little bit about the yoni wash and then i'm gonna let y'all go because i ain't gonna hold y'all all day but um her yoni wash is it's a it's a nice thick sort of um consistency but it foams up so great i love it like i really really enjoy it. i need to get more um but she has it in three different it helps you like well this is what she says on the site it helps you maintain ph while gently cleansing your delicate skin so it's good for people who are very sensitive down there um she says that people who have like huge sensitivities in that area still like really love it so i feel like you should give it a try if you're like when people are like oh, i'm not using anything down there then that's cool, but if you're if you don't because you're sensitive, this is probably still worth a try because her ingredients are like actually really gentle. Um, but anyways, four fragrances. One is Goddess Pussy. That's the one I had. It's the pink one. That one smells like an exotic fruit basket, dragon fruit extract, aloe vera, witch hazel, strawberry oil, lime essential oil, orange essential oil, chamomile extract, and mica. The other is Tastes Like Pineapples. That one is a light and refreshing tingle. Pineapple extract, peppermint essential oil, aloe vera leaf extract, organic chamomile extract, witch hazel, citric acid, and mica. Then there is Big Purr. Big Purr is fresh and peachy. Aloe leaf juice, witch hazel, apricot kernel oil, sweet peach oil, sweet orange essential oil, chamomile extract, and mica. And then she has a swirl, which is the mixture of the goddess pussy and Tastes Like Pineapples, like swirled in one bottle and you can kind of like see that on the website here but um yeah so y'all go support it's not i'm not just saying that because it's my cousin i'm saying it because i like the products and it's what i smell like 99% of the time and but if you are really if you really do this fragrance shit like if you really do this fragrance shit y'all know about layering your fragrances right this that's what i do so at nighttime i'm layering my fragrances i'm putting on probably one of these not not always, but when I'm going out, out, I'm putting on one of these and I'm layering it with Baccarat. I'm layering it with, um, what am I wearing right now? I got a Kenzo one that I wear a lot. I got um, a Killin one that I wear a lot. What else am I wearing? I can't think of the one that I'm thinking of right now. Oh, y'all, I don't remember. My memory is terrible. I guess one day I can go through my perfume collection with y'all. Um, but anyways, which is weird because I'm allergic to perfume, so. Yeah, but um, I have a lot. But anyways, um, I'm layering my fragrances. So that's what I do. Sometimes I mix some of these like to get me like a, a unique smell, like something that nobody else is going to smell like this because I'm putting together two different products. So I said that to say that if you really are into the fragrance stuff and you know about layering your fragrances, these are amazing to layer with. Specifically, I feel that way about the um, Blue Lotus Body Oil, the Sacred Blue Lotus Body Oil collection, the original collection in the gold vials. To me, those are phenomenal for that purpose. So um. Yeah, y'all, that's all I want to talk about. This is a quick update, a quick little favorite things review. Um, I'm coming to y'all soon with new content, I promise. Thank y'all for listening. Um, the website for her is www.bodyofagoddess.co. You can find her on all the socials at bodyofagoddess.co. That's TikTok. That's, um, what is it, Instagram? I think that's all that she, I don't know if she has Facebook, but you can find her. I'm going to put y'all on the website. I'm going to put everything in the show notes or whatever so y'all can connect to her. Um, thanks for hanging in there with me, y'all, for being so loyal. Um, please, please, please like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. I really need to get back on track and I really need to get, you know, people that don't know me who are listening so that I can do this consistently and I can create a Patreon and I can just make this go way further than what I 
have it at right now. And I believe in that for myself, right? So I need y'all to help me. So with that being said, I appreciate y'all for listening and for hanging in there with me. I promise I'm back very, very soon with new content. Y'all take care.